it is a pleasure to meet you. As I, I told you when I saw you earlier today, before you won, I said, you got to have Brandon on the show. We got to, somebody call Brandon right away. I just thought you were unbelievable from the very first time I saw you. Well, thank you. I mean, it's a, uh, to get that from you, I, I will completely ignore all the internet trolls who like to throw shade in my way. Good, good for you. Um, so, so you're standing there, and obviously they hadn't had a spoken word poet on before, and you're in the finals. Did, did you think, I have a shot at this? Were you surprised when you heard your name? Oh, no, most certainly surprised. To be honest with you, I thought that Christina Ray was going to win, because she was absolutely phenomenal in her finals performance. But yeah. when they threw her out at, well, when she got eliminated at third, I was like, dang, I actually have a realistic shot at winning this thing. And so uh, when they called my name, I just dropped to my knees, said a quick little thankful prayer, and uh, immediately was just overjoyed at the journey I was able to go on. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just so excited for you. I'm, I'm happy for you. Because you, I know you auditioned three years ago, and they didn't put you on. Oh, yeah, no. Nah. Three years ago, I, I went and tried out and got a hard no. Um, and uh, to be honest, that was actually a really great benefit for me, though. In those three years, I matured a lot as a person. I grew a lot as an artist. And it, it really gave me an opportunity to come and, and be prepared to not only handle the stage, but to also handle all of the things that would come afterwards in terms of the social media and all the other stuff yeah. that you have to take care of. Yeah. I mean, I think there's something to be said for working hard and not just overnight success and going through a lot of rejection. It, it helps you. Um, so how old were you when you first started doing this? Ah, uh, good old middle school. I couldn't sing, so uh, being an R&B head, I would write uh, poems for girls who I thought were cute and uh, <laughs> never really share them. That wasn't really my whole thing, uh, especially being a basketball player. But then when I went to college, I started a group entitled Called to Move, which is my business and nonprofit. And uh, it was just an eclectic group of weirdos on campus who didn't really have a place, but we were all artists who wanted something to be able to call our own and to share. So. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, you can tell uh, you, you talk about personal things. So it, it helps you. I mean, I find you know, writing is so cathartic. So when you're writing, you're working through a lot of stuff, and then you're sharing it. Yeah. I mean, writing is, my, is a really big space of healing for me, accompanied with like, my time with God. Like, I use writing to help me process through like, different issues between faith, politics, family, like the whole thing. And it gives me a space to be able to like judgment-free express my thoughts and then discern how I'm feeling about something and then share it with the world. Yeah. And now you've got a million dollars. Yep. What, <laughs> what are you going to do with a million dollars? Uh, for myself, uh, Sally Mae is waiting for me to give her a call and pay off some of them student loans, as well as uh, the people who, uh, who, who got the mortgage on my house. But um, bigger than that, I'm looking forward to really giving back to Stockton. Um, I was leading poetry workshops in my town uh, with grade school kids, and we had published over 700 youth in the past three years. And so this upcoming time, I'm really looking forward to going back whether it be virtual or in person, to be able to make sure that I'm not the last poet out of stock. So that's the hope. I, w listen, I think you're going to inspire so many people. And like you said, like, OK, I can't sing, but I have this talent. So spoken word, I think it's beautiful. I, I hope this starts a whole new wave of that. And today, you're doing uh, uh, something you wrote about Breonna Taylor, right? Yes. No, I, uh, on, on the day of my winning, unfortunately came a, a, a tragic loss for a great deal of this country. And so um, I never really got my shot to, to share my feelings about it. So figured, so why not today? Today, I can't wait to hear it. I can't wait people, for people to see you. We're going to take a break, and Brandon's going to perform when we come back. We'll be right back. <laughs> Performing a brand new poem for us, please welcome back the winner of America's Got Talent, Brandon Leak. <laughs> To be honest, <laughs> I'm not going to apologize for this piece. The utilization of my voice to speak for those whose absence from this earth beckons my pen to scribble them back into existence. And besides, I mean, God gave me this gift, so I figured I might as well use it. So, Brianna Taylor, you will forever live within the ink of my pen and on the forefront of my conscious. You were an EMT in the process of becoming a nurse. You carry love in excess, care for others you possessed. A beloved daughter you were. 
a diamond on full display. The way that you rocked for you, community, it was so clear to see. 4K plus 10, you were a shining example to your family and friends, and I hate the fact that I have to speak of your name in the past tense. And I hate the fact that I have to list off your accomplishments just so that way somebody else's consciousness can perceive or receive that your humanity had value. And I hate the way our culture will dig up somebody's past before we've even dug them a grave just so they can justify they hate. But since we're here, I figure I might as well address the issue. So one, no, Brianna was not fired as an EMT. She was still joyfully employed when she was murdered. Two, no, Brianna was not responsible for anybody in the trunk. That man was apprehended and pled guilty to the crime. Three, no, Brianna was not smuggling drugs, and nor was her current boyfriend at the time. And four, no, Brianna did not deserve to die. Even if all the things in which I just spoke about her were true, and they are not, she, should, she still should have been given her due process. But instead, bullocks in excess came through and repossessed a beloved daughter a diamond on full display, so clear to see. And I know what some of y'all out there are thinking. And I dang sure agree that not all cops are bad, but in the same breath, I must affirm that all black folks ain't criminal. And my question to y'all is, as a citizen, how am I supposed to discern the difference between a good cop and a bad cop when they both function under a broken system and the good cops remain complicit? So, Brianna, the tragic news of your case came in accompaniment of one of my most joyous of days. I know this poem ain't much, but I hope the movement of my pen can somehow help make it right, because this ain't right. website to find out how you can apply for the next season of America's Got Talent. Hi, I'm Andy. Ellen asked me to remind you to subscribe to her channel so you can see more awesome videos, like videos of me getting scared or saying embarrassing things, like Ball Peen Hammer, and also some videos of Ellen and other celebrities, if you're into that sort of thing. Oh, God! God!